known objects, cars, and an unknown object, the beam ship, on the same frame. Here, the Japanese utilized the freeze frame technique in order to determine the size relationship of the beam ship to the car. This 1979 NTV footage shows the site where Meyer shot his 1975 sequence of the beam ship hovering near a farmhouse. As this footage dissolves to Meyer's original film, note the beam ship beginning an aerial display above a large tree which once stood near the farmhouse. Meyer recalls that he was guided telepathically to the location and that the weather was bad. Snow and rain fell throughout the day. Once again, the erratic movement of the craft gives the appearance of an object suspended by a string or wire. Close examination of the film clearly shows the craft circling behind the large tree. When the size of the beam ship is compared to that of the tree and the house, it becomes obvious that due to its size, it would be impossible to suspend with strings or wire. In addition, the top of the enormous tree can be seen to move as the craft passes over it. This movement can be attributed to the backwash of air created by the ship. Watch again. Once more, the branches can be seen to sway from the force of the beam ship. Mysteriously, within three hours after the filming, Meyer noted that the tree began to die. Inside of three months, the tree was gone, leading to the conclusion that perhaps the electromagnetic radiation or energy contained some harmful elements that might have killed the tree. This segment clearly illustrates that the Pleiadian beam ships are capable of transcending dimensions at will. Watch closely. The craft is seen hovering in the upper portion of the screen. Then suddenly, it will literally jump down to a point just above the knoll in the lower center of the screen. As it hits the chumps, there is always like a flash on the knoll. Now we will examine the film frame by frame. Analysis failed to detect any alteration or trickery in the film. At the moment of the dematerialization or jump, the scene becomes very bright, unreasonably bright. Could there be a correlation between Meyer feeling an electrical shock during the contacts and the film becoming brighter? Now, analyze the beam ship's dematerialization scenes we reviewed earlier. Three frames prior to the disappearance, a green exposure is observed in the lower part of the scene. The same phenomenon occurs within three frames of the return of the craft. It is believed that this film indicates that the beam ship is emitting some sort of energy within three twentieths of a second, just before the ship dematerializes or rematerializes.
We close this investigative report with some final comments from Mr. Edward Meyer. The materialism way doesn't the true way mm -hmm. for the life of a human being. Mm -hmm. There are two points who are very important, or they are very important. That's the materialism way and the spiritual way. Mm -hmm. They have to work together. Mm -hmm. Not only one of them have to work. And to change this again to the real way, to the connected way by materialism way and spiritual way, they comes here again to teach the earth people over some few minutes. Mm. So, uh, how That's many the only reason they have. I That's see. their own saying. Not to, to bring war to earth or to bring peace to the human here on earth by themselves. Mm -hmm. If we want peace and knowledge and love and everything here on earth, we have to change everything by ourselves as human beings from this earth. This true story that took place in Switzerland is far beyond common knowledge or understanding. The beam ship footage taken by Edward Meyer is astonishing, but it's so clear that it's almost too good to be true. Because of this, there are many people who do not believe this case is real. Despite this, the evidence presented in this video investigation has been backed by facts from many scientific fields of study. Still, each individual must personally decide for themselves their levels of beliefs concerning UFOs in general, and more particularly, this case. This report will close with a message from the stadium that is delivered to Mr. Miller.